you guys remember this? It's an animated pamphlet that was handed out to me at the HTM Mixer in Kansas City. I thought it was one of the coolest things I had ever seen. Handed out by Innovatus Imaging. I liked it so much I made a whole video about it and showed you guys the video that plays in its entirety. But how does it work? How does it know that the cover's open? I said that it was probably Hall Effect sensors and somebody disagreed with me and said that it's probably a magnetic reed switch. We're gonna find out today right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, I have the Innovatus Imaging video-centric pamphlet. I tell you what, this is one of the coolest ideas I have ever seen come out of a trade show. But as with everything, I need to know how it works. It's got an Hello, excellent message. And, and I watched the entire thing several times over. What an effective means of communication. But guys, people are asking, how does it work? How does it know? And I said that I do believe, yeah, see there is a magnet in the cover right here, but is the magnet pulling up on a magnetic reed? Or is it just coming close enough in proximity to a Hall effect sensor and the Hall effect sensor is actually what's activating, deactivating? That's what I think is going on here. And there's a few reasons why, and we'll go over that in just a minute but I'm going to dissect this pamphlet and we're gonna see exactly what technology is behind this nice, pretty covering. So, to get me started, I have my iFixit kit right here, which comes with a very cool spudging tool and also some plastic spudging tools. I'm gonna have a link to this kit in the description down below. So you too can pick one of these up. It's got some real cool features. If you guys open up sensitive electronics, it's got non-marring spudging tools. I've got these things that look like a guitar pick. They're a non-marring spudging tool. And we're gonna use all these tools to very carefully open up the case on this guy. Now, I already know that there is a magnet in the lid. I can see it, it's definitely there. And that means that if it was a Hall effect sensor, it would be right about here. So I gotta be very careful about this. And I guess one of the first things I gotta do is separate this back cover. So right here, I noticed that there's a glued seam. And this would be an excellent time to use my hot air station, hot air station that's sitting right next to me here. There we go. So that's how a spudging tool is used. It's not sharp. I pulled away pretty quickly because I still don't want to cut my hand. But it's not sharp. It's meant to be dull. And that gets me behind the front cover. Okay. I can see some seams right here. There we go. Excellent. I was going to try and save it, but they have used extra adhesive on this guy, and I do not think I'll be able to save the outer covering. Okay. You can see that there's a foam. Yep. So it's seated in foam. <laughs> I like that it wants to play every time I open the cover. Okay. Alright, so that gets me down to the electronics of it. This front faceplate is folded over cardboard. Very cool. Oh boy. Wow, they glued the heck out of this, didn't they? All right, 
Yeah, that's great. Let's just access it from the back. Look at all that adhesive. Okay, there's the micro USB. All right. Okay, I can see the LCD panel. Okay, so this is all glued down so well. Okay, I guess I'm just going to go forth with the pick. Alright, how cool is this? Okay, so that is the cover. It's got an extra insulation piece or probably to add rigidity to the back panel. All right. Okay, so let's take a look inside the back. I've got the speaker up here in the corner. Yeah. I've got a lithium polymer battery, single cell. That's actually kind of large. It's 1200 milliamp hour. I'm surprised. So right here is the ribbon cable that comes to my LCD panel. Right here would be my uh, play pause button. This one right here is my uh, volume down and volume up. And the part in question is this little board right here. Oh yeah, and I can tell what it is just by looking at it. Guys, I did a whole video on recognizing components and how it'll get you ahead just by noticing what a component looks like. Greatly aids your troubleshooting. Okay, so I'm trying not to break anything, including the wires, because what we have here is a Hall Effect sensor, for sure. Now, I pretty much already knew that it was going to be a Hall Effect sensor before I even opened it up. And the reason I knew that is because I could have the cover open about a quarter of an inch and it would shut off. That is telltale signs of a... Uh, Hall effect sensor because magnetic reed switches usually require really, really close proximity in order for it to pull the, the reed over with the magnetic field. But with a Hall effect sensor, the sensitivity can actually be quite loose. It's very promiscuous. And uh, you can have the contacts, the magnet and the Hall effect sensor quite a distance away and it will activate the Hall effect sensor. So that is what it was doing. And it was definitely a telltale sign of a uh, hall sensor. Wow, I'm gonna see if I can get this guy out. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna have to flip over to the plastic splidging tool because I don't wanna break anything. There we go. Look at this, it's got a bunch of extra wiring in the back. That's kind of cool because that allows me to pull stuff out for demonstration purposes. So let me get you guys an up-close look at the hall sensor. Okay, so what you can see on there, it almost looks like a transistor. And that is a telltale sign of a hall sensor because it does have three legs on the hall sensor. And I did a whole video on hall effect sensors, so I, I would recommend going in there uh, and it explains how magnetic field um, distorts what's going on inside and activates a Hall effect sensor. So, um, anyway, I could tell that just by looking at it. It looks like a transistor. A magnetic reed usually looks like a glass tube and you have two little reeds that are slightly separated. And when you put a magnetic field next to it, it'll pull one reed against the other. And that would be a mechanical element and mechanical elements are prone to failure or they're just very expensive to implement. You can see this is a tiny little card. It's got a tiny, tiny little Hall effect sensor, three wires connected to the PCB over and done. It uses very little electricity, which is probably paramount because this guy could be played 20, 30 times in a day, 
given that it's handed out at trade shows. All right. So you can see the LCD panel is in here. It's hot glued in. I have my controller board, which does have memory. Um, I should look up that chip to see how much memory that is. I would assume that's an 8 gig chip. And here's a memory chip too. This is your main controller chip. And then you've got your buttons. Your USB charger right here. here. Let me pull it all out so you guys can get a better look. Go figure. Wow, that is glued in so well. I'll tell you, whoever whoever it was that um, manufactured these for Innovus uh, Imaging, Innovatus Imaging, they actually, the build quality is pretty good. They taped everything down. They didn't just slam it in there. I mean, these guys spent some real money or they found a really good uh, vendor for these products. So here's the micro USB right here for charging the lithium polymer. Very cool, guys. It's as simple as it need be. Now, what I would be curious about is if this board has contacts that you can use to record. And I see a couple contacts down here that almost look like, well, that one definitely looks like serial. I should do a whole video on serial. You see the four connectors right here? So it's either going to be with the charging cable or with an auxiliary serial that they use to program these things. And I would assume that they program them with this guy right here. But um, that is usually a telltale sign. If you got four little connectors or four little pins on a side of a board, especially next to the controller, it's usually a telltale sign that there's some sort of serial data or you program this chip with serial. And this one here, which is your charge port, is probably what they use to preload the, um, the video file. But anyway, guys, that is the Innovatus Imaging pamphlet that they handed out to me. So I, I knew I was going to get around to uh, the we do, experimenting with it. It was just a matter of time because on this channel, it's about learning. It's about figuring out how things work. And this is just such an opportunity. I mean... Look at all these buttons that are in here. These are, yeah, actually really reasonable quality buttons too. So that's what this channel's all about. We're about learning, exploring, <laughs> unfortunately, innovative imaging. Thank you very much, guys, for donating this to make so this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Innovators.